we are going to discuss spectral estimation using window functions now. Um, before we discuss that, uh, let me tell you why uh, do we use window functions and what are window functions. Basically, window functions are um, different functions that are used to smooth out the input data for which you are trying to find the uh, spectral contents. Why we have to smooth, smooth out the uh, input data or, or the data for which we are trying to find the spectral content. So if you go back to uh, discrete Fourier transform discussion when we started that, the idea was that you take any uh, T naught seconds of uh, a signal that you are interested in uh, and then you uh, sample that signal with the sampling frequency and then you repeat those samples to make a discrete periodic signal. And the reason we were making the discrete periodic signal because we derived the discrete Fourier transform using which uh, we can evaluate the spectral content of any discrete periodic signal. So once we have a discrete periodic signal, we can use discrete Fourier, uh, discrete uh, Fourier series to evaluate the spectral contents. Uh, so the, the, the discrete Fourier transform, as um, I explained, in the notes and in the video, discrete Fourier transform is basically discrete Fourier series over one period uh, of samples uh, and discrete Fourier series uh, coefficient dk is scaled by n. So you discrete Fourier transform x of k is basically n times dk. That we have discussed. So the condition for discrete Fourier transform was that we take the samples, discrete samples for one time period and then we repeat those samples. Now there is another condition uh, which says that when we repeat the samples they have to be uh, or they should be continuous to each other. What do I mean by continuous to each other? So basically if you have samples, let me draw it. So if you're taking samples, let's say you take four samples, you have sample number one or sample number two, let's say sample number one is zero, sample number, uh, sample number zero, sample number one, sample number two, sample number three. And then you repeat this, right? So this is pretty much your signal right? like this. So now what's going to happen when you repeat this? So if you have a uh, if you have a signal like this, let's say, and let's say you cut t naught seconds of the signal, so t naught is this right here, right? So when you repeat this signal, when you take the samples and you repeat this signal, how it's going to look like? It's going to look like this, and then at this time where you cut it, it's going to go down because you are going to repeat this again and then it's going to be like this. Of course, it's going to be discrete, so it's going to be samples, but it's going to look like this, something like this. Of course, it's not perfect that I'm drawing, but you get the idea. So this signal, at this instant of time right here, it is what? It is discontinuous. Why? Because at this instant of time, you have a high value and you have a low value. So if a signal is continuous, that means the next cycle of the signal pretty much starts where the last cycle ended. So if the signal is like this, like getting um, the last sample is at zero, so the next sample is starting at this, that signal is continuous. Now this signal has a dis not continuous, it has a continuity, sorry. So this signal has a discontinuity right here. And anytime you have discontinuity in a signal, it gives rise to harmonics. And what do those harmonics do? I'm going to go back to the last example that we discussed in the last video. Those harmonics are here. This is called spectral leakage. This is called spectral leakage. All this thing, this is produced by the harmonics that happen when you don't um, take the T naught seconds of the signal that you're sampling uh, in such a way that 
you introduce discontinuity at the time that you cut it. So these harmonics uh, takes place because of these harmonics take place because of that phenomenon. And this is called a spectral leakage. It's called a spectral leakage, which is given right here. A spectral leakage. So this is the background as what happens if you introduce discontinuity in a signal that you are going to evaluate for discrete Fourier transform. So now the question is uh, how to reduce spectral leakage. And to reduce spectral leakage, we use window functions. And what are window, window functions? As, as I ex, uh, mentioned in the beginning of the lecture, that window functions are the functions that smooth out the input data. What do I mean by smooth out the input data? Basically, it smooth out the edges in general of the input data. So it makes the edges pretty much zero. Edges of the data, it makes them zero. So when you repeat that data to make a continuous signal, a periodic signal, then basically you are not introducing discontinuity at the point of repetition, right? Okay, so there are um, five window functions that are discussed in your book, uh, four in this chapter and one uh, in chapter number seven. And these are the window functions. Uh, rectangular window, which is basically no window function. It basically says I multiply the data by a rectangular window. So it's not going to really affect the data. Uh, triangular window function, something like this. So when you multiply input data by triangular, basically each point of the data is multiplied by the corresponding value of this triangle. So as you can see, if you multiply the the uh, extreme points of the data the first few points and the last few points then of course they are close to zero when you multiply it because the first value is zero and the last value of zero likewise you have a hamming window function which is more like a gaussian function like this and hanning window which is also similar to hamming a gaussian function as you can see hamming window and hanning window there is not much difference uh, the coefficient is 0 0.54 here it is 0 0.5 and is 0 0.46 and 0 0.5. So there's not much different. Now, how do you generate this? Uh, these uh, functions, window functions, it's very, very easy. N is the number of samples of the input signal. So remember the window function length will exactly be the same as the input function uh, because you are multiplying the two vectors together. So they need to have the same length. So N is the length of the input vector and lowercase n again, like the input vector goes from 0 to uppercase n minus 1, likewise it goes from 0 to uppercase n minus 1. Right? So once you know how many data points are there for the input vector, you can easily generate any, um, any of the window functions. So what do you do to treat the input data vector with, uh, with the window function and then um, to find the spectral contents? These are the three points basically right here. First you generate total number of points of the window vector, 0 to n minus 1, you, you basically use that formula and then you generate n, uppercase n, data points corresponding to the formula. And then you multiply the input vector by the window vector. So this is basically now x, w, n, that is the, the window treated input data vector, window treated input data vector. So that's your x, w, n which is actually right here, I can see that. And then you basically apply DFT. If, if, if there are few points, and if I ask you to show me the work, then of course you have to use the DFT formula, you have to show me the work. But generally, when we are analyzing thousands of points or hundreds of points, you don't have to show work, you always use MATLAB. So then you use the, DFT fun the FFT function in MATLAB uh, to analyze the spectral contents of the window treated input data vector. And once you have that, you can compare it with the original spectral content for the original function x of n, and then you can see how it has um, reduced the spectral leakage. Uh, so we go to an example. So basically this example is the continuation of example 4-4 where you saw all that spectral leakage that I pointed out. So what, what we are going to do, we're going to take the same function, same number of samples, but now we're going to treat the input data vector with Hamming window. So we're going to take 
same number of samples from the same function and then we're gonna multiply that by the Hamming window function so we're gonna go ahead and create a vector this vector using this formula and there were 100 samples that we took in, in example 4.4 so uppercase n is gonna be 100 and lowercase n is gonna go from 0 to 99 okay so we're gonna generate 100 samples of the Hamming window and once we have those samples we're gonna go ahead and multiply those samples by the samples of the input data vector to generate window treated input data vector and then we're gonna go ahead and take the Fourier transform of that FFT so this is the window treated input data vector I'm using a stem function to plot it that is you know each uh, uh, sample but you can also use plot function and it's going to show you a continuous plot both for the input signal and this it, it, it doesn't really matter all right so look at the FFT of this the DFT of this so this was the original from example 4.4 these are all the spectral leakage I'm, as I mentioned out of course our um, frequencies were 2000 hertz 5000 hertz uh, and this is fs by 2 uh, what was that uh, 1500 so 7500 hertz is fs by 2 somewhere here or here that's fs by 2 and remember if a signal is oversampled that means you can um, you can have all the frequencies in the signal up to fs by 2 which is the folding frequency and these two frequencies are basically the frequencies of the signal again I discussed that uh, in detail so you can go and check that out uh, it's also given of course in example 4.4 so there are two frequencies in that signal are 2000 Hertz and 5000 Hertz and of course bunch of sp spectral leakage now look at this all the spectral leakage or not all but most of the spe spectral leakage basically it is suppressed now you have the 2000 Hertz you have the 5000 Hertz 